Much of the talk around the Tampa Bay Buccaneers was surrounding their acquisition of future Hall of Fame quarterback Tom Brady, but quietly, the Bucs attacked their 2020 draft class with the ambition of helping maximize the time that Brady has left by trying to build a winner around him. Getting running back Keyshawn Vaughn out of Vanderbilt in round three helps add talent to the backfield, but also shows the confidence that the team has in Ronald Jones, as he and Vaughn would make a productive combination. Khalil Davis, a defensive tackle out of Nebraska, had a solid week of work down at the East West Shrine Bowl. He and linebacker Chappelle Russell out of Temple will surely provide good depth along the defensive side of the ball. One of the things I liked most about the Bucks draft was offensive tackle Tristan Wirtz out of Iowa. He was one of the four elite tackle prospects in the draft class and can step in right away and start on the right side, giving the Bucks an excellent tackle who is good on both ends of offense. Safety Antoine Winfield Jr. plays the game a lot like a cross between former Colts safety Bob Sanders and current Ravens safety Earl Thomas. He has great football instincts and playmaking ability, and Winfield Jr. figures to be a dynamic move piece defensively for defensive coordinator Ty Bowles. His goal for teammate Tyler Johnson figures to be what you look for in a possession receiver, and while he may not blow the doors off you with his speed, he doesn't shy away from contact and has proven to be a very physical player at both the catch point and also after the catch. I like the Bucks' seventh round selection of Raymond Colley out of Louisiana. He's already the best retirement on the roster and adds another game-breaking element to the offense as he can do damage without volume in the run game as well as be a downfield threat in the passing game. Expect him to have a huge, significant role as a rookie. Oklahoma's cornerback Parnell Motley has fantastic man-to-man coverage skills. He shows proficiency in that area no matter if it's man press or off-man coverage. He stays very sticky out there on the perimeter. He's a fluid athlete that has very good acceleration when closing on the ball, and I thought he was outstanding at the East-West Shrine Bowl. Cam Gill out of Wagner shows a great first step off the ball and is able to maintain that acceleration in his path to the quarterback. He's solid in the run game, showing that he can set a hard edge, and he stepped out of his comfort zone at the East-West Shrine Bowl as he was being asked to drop in coverage a lot more, something that he wasn't doing at Wagner and showed improvement with each and every day. Zach Shackelford out of Texas does a great job in staying consistent with his hands being inside, and at times, he looks like he's able to lift and drive the defensive lineman way back into the secondary. I think he's going to be a very good depth player up front for the Bucks. So will guard John Melcon out of Boise State. Melcon's best trait to me is his patience. He doesn't get over aggressive at the line of scrimmage and overextend. He stays patient, stays square, and is able to effectively execute his blocks. Going from the Bucks of East Tennessee State to the Bucks of Tampa Bay, defensive end Nasir Player plays with really good length up front and has those heavy hands to stun defensive linemen, I'm sorry, offensive linemen. He flashes potential as a five tech, and I think that's where he'll find a role with Tampa Bay. At East Tennessee State, the two-time FCS All-American compiled 18 and a half sacks and 40 TFLs in his career. I like the body control of Jacksonville State wide receiver Josh Pearson. He truly trusts his hands out there on the field and does a great job of tracking the ball once it's in the air. Now, for a taller receiver, I believe he's very comfortable in executing the shorter routes, showing the ability to get in and out of his breaks rather fluidly. It was a bit of a surprise to see Michael Divinity Jr. go undrafted. The former LSU Tiger has very good athleticism and versatility and could essentially play multiple linebacker spots. I think being a core special teamer will be his way to make and stick on the roster. Nick Leverett out of Rice was a grad transfer from North Carolina Central where he was a three-time all MEAC performer. Now at Rice, he was able to elevate his game, showing some craftiness in how he understands angles and attacks them to get the better position on a defensive lineman. He had an excellent week of work down at the 2020 Tropical Bowl in front of many NFL scouts. Quarterback Reed Sinet out of San Diego has a lot of upside as he was only a one-year starter for the Toreros and lands in an ideal spot to help grow his game. What he does well is operate off play action. He does a great job, in my opinion, in throwing on the move and can make those cover two bucket throws with ease. He'll be an interesting guy to watch throughout the whole entirety of training camp. I gave the Buccaneers an A- minus for their draft. They landed some elite talent at the top of the draft with Wirfs and Winfield, but also added what could be year one contributors and core special teamers the rest of the way. I think with what they did with their undrafted free agent class helps round out a great end of April for Tampa Bay.